Yo, this is Brad P, fucking EDI, talking about shit like 1090 Jake, so I'm gonna get some bump shit. Bump, bump, yeah, this is Brad P, fucking rocking with Jar, because you're rocking with me. Fuck that shit, right? From England. Right, so I'll do, I'll tell you some shit about our shit over here. Right, the case that came about, yeah? Had Jane really been sold to a mother and father? Just as easily as a product in a shop, quite rightly, she would want answers. This has come from a, sto- from a story from True Crime magazine called The Black Market Babies. Right. Peering out the window onto the snow covered street, I sighed. Mum, I'm bored, I complained. Go and play with your sister, she suggested. But rather than play with Michelle, 15, I decided to sweep around my parents' bedroom instead. I was a curious 12 year old and loved to investigate anything that was off limits. So rummaging around, rummaging around the bedroom, I came across a pink satin book buried deep down in a drawer. I've not seen that before, I thought. It's a baby book filled with details about me and Michelle. Only there was one detail that confused me. My parents had recorded my date of birth as the 15th of January 1965. Now, that's not right. I was born on the 6th of December 1964, that I thought. I marched downstairs to where my mum, Jean, was making lunch. What is this? I demanded, holding the book out. Why does it say my birthday is in January? That's the day we picked you up, mum said without missing a beat. Oh, I replied. Since the age of six, I'd known I was adopted. So was Michelle. I'd also heard that we were black market babies, but I was too young to understand what that meant. Every time I asked my parents about it, they changed the subject. Through eavesdropping, I managed to catch snippets of information over the years. One name particularly stood out to me, the Hicks Clinic. Eventually, I convinced my dad, Jim, to tell me all about it. Well, when your Aunt Alice couldn't have a child, she and her husband that bought a little boy from a man called Dr Hicks, Dad explained. I saw your mum struggling with desperation as she tried to become a mum. Two. When it didn't happen, we also went to Dr. Hicks. I listened to your dad's story and I was astonished. My dad's story, sorry. He'd actually paid money for me and Michelle. Dad explained that our mothers had just given us up for adoption. Think about it, that's the day we picked you up. What the fuck? Anyway, but he had no idea who my birth parents were or where they came from. Your mum and I drove to the clinic. We were told to pull round to the back of the building and wait in the car, he told me. Next thing we knew, Dr. Hicks emerged with a baby covered in blood. Wrapped in a blanket, that baby was you. You were just a few hours old. I sat there dumbfounded, trying to take it all in. We drove away quick without getting a receipt, Dad continued. We got a receipt for Michelle, though. A receipt for a fucking baby. That's what I was thinking. We weren't possessions. We were fucking bought. The thought had left me fuming. Over the years, I'd heard rumours of ex babies, wondered how many there were. Other important questions raced through my mind as well. Where do I come from? Who's my birth mother? Who am I? What the fuck? I started investigating secretly, eavesdropping on more conversations and filling the information away. I was filing it all away to fucking keep me together. This was the 80s, so we didn't have the internet. Instead, I researched public records the old school way. At the library, I made phone calls, even wrote to the county where I was born, desperate for any clue that could lead me to my fucking birth mother. When my own investigations turned up nothing, I got in touch with a private investigator. I'm expensive, and I can't guarantee that I'll find anything, he admitted. And to be honest, it sounds like you're doing exactly what I would do. He also said, I was deflated, fucking deflated, but when he offered me a lifeline, keep searching, if you hit a stumbling block, give me a call and I'll guide you through it. That's what he said. I was so touched that he, this guy, did not fucking know and wanted to help. Inspired by my own search, I started working for local private investigators taking on fraud cases. So interesting, uncovering secret after secret. Meanwhile, I received some devastating news. One had been diagnosed with cancer. After a six year battle, she sadly passed away. We we're all heartbroken. A few months after Mum's death, I decided it was time to ramp up my investigation, so I paid a visit to the town where the Hicks Clinic used to be. 
Dr. Hicks had passed away years before, but I wanted to speak to the residents and see if they knew anything about Dr. Hicks and my birth family. They were less than welcoming. We don't have anything here for you, one woman told me when I explained what I was looking for. Dr. Hicks was a great man, another woman told me, flashing me the dirtiest look. When on his questioning didn't get me anywhere, I decided to lie. I'm writing a book, I told a local voice. No, you're not, he interrupted. Tell me what you're here for. My jaw dropped. I hadn't expected him to be so abrupt. I brought down and told the florist, Frank, everything. I've lived in this town a long time. He told me, I'll try and help you. Frank was as good as his word. He set up meetings with people he thought might be useful to me. Slowly, I started to gather more information. Dr. Hicks had set up a clinic to perform legal abortions. Illegal abortions, should I say. Then in the 50s and 60s, he began selling babies on the black market, saying that he'd done the fucking abortions. It was a lucrative business, but how was he keeping the women quiet to make the babies come out? Let's see. But I was appalled. How could he have gotten away with it for so long? May I just add there, that's me. Brad who's fucking put that one in how is he getting away with it she hasn't said that here so from this story this is my little thing why this was such a lucrative business anyway while I'd learnt a lot about the clinic no one could tell me anything about my birth family but I persisted even when I gave up work as a private investigator this is her by the way as I moved on another area of the law I continued to search for answers Right, there she is. This is the bird. This is the bird. That's her, the baby one, brother. That's her, the family there, yeah. Nice tie, there you go. Right, look. Fucking there you go. Everything that you need to see. Right, so where are we back at now? Another lot. I'd continue to search for her. Since I got married, one day I told my husband's grandmother, Mimi, Oh, that name should not really come out in this conversation. Mimi, 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 yeah, Mimi. Yeah, I use that. Somebody, somebody smiled at me once about that. It was a bit out about, about my uh, black market adoption. I know what you mean, she said when I mentioned Dr. Hicks. My neighbours bought two babies for him. I was astonished. How many more babies were sold that I wondered? A local newspaper columnist agreed to run my story response was fucking incredible. So many strangers came forward saying they had been born at the X clinic. I spoke to all of them trying to work out whether they had been sold on the black market. Using DNA and piecing together even the smallest of details, many of the Hicks babies went on to find that their birth parents and they find out to find them correct. Meanwhile, I still haven't found out my own birth family. Dad had passed away from diabetes a few years after my mum's death. I desperately wanted to find my birth family before it was too late. One day, my cousin, there's me. Well, that's not me, obviously, that's the bits I'm talking about. It was too late. One day, my cousin got in touch. She was a guy in a cot genealogist, sorry. She'd be helping me in my search. I think I found them, Jane, she told me excitedly. Your birth family, they match on your old DNA. You're kidding me, I gasped. After all this time, I started contacting my DNA matches open to narrow down the list of names my cousin had sent to me. One day I struck gold. Yes, I distantly related to your birth mother, explained the woman as I told her the story over the phone. I'm so happy I found you, I said. In time I found, because we talk like twats like that when we get to people. In time I found other relatives, but I still haven't found my birth mother. I ought to one day. Now I've written a book about my story called Taken at Birth. It includes the story of some of the other Hicks babies. So far, there have been approximately 200 confirmed Hicks babies. All of them had taken fake birth certificates out for them, forged by Dr. Hicks. Before his death, Dr. Hicks had been charged with conducting illegal abortions at the clinic. The abortions were not nice. They were done in the sickest of ways. You remember the old court anger technique? That is what was used. Do you remember the fact that we were using massive amounts of overdosing morphine to kill a baby off and then let the baby rot inside the cervix? That's what I'm talking about. Now that's coming direct from me, Brad, fucking not them. Right, in reality it was secretly selling babies, the worst crime, the saddest thing for all the people, it was the children, the Irish who were stolen from us, yeah, not me, them. Adoption can be wonderful if it's done properly, but no one has a right to deny people the chance to know their own birth parents. I've had that done, right, I know, somebody, somebody took away from somebody the, the right that... 
somebody took away my partner's right to to be able to tell me that properly that, that, that my child was mine and it turned out that my child was mine but somebody may have taken away that chance from her by doing something obviously you can go as it begins with her and it ends with he you know what I mean it's so now it's just like how, what more can I say about it? this is me dusting down the videos like 1090 Jake and all that does listen let me give you what I can give you from this I see that this girl went through a fucking hell of a lot, yeah, but we were being American, right, and it's going to sound pretty disgusting. The girl's 56-year-old, yeah, and well, there's the picture of her again, yeah. Right, she don't look 56 years old. She looks like she's lived a very privileged life, yeah. So at the end of the day, right, if you knew where this video was getting broadcast from, and broadcast from our fucking tent, yeah, where me and my missus are the happiest motherfuckers. Like, baby, we're happy here or what? Can you just say it as loud as you can? Yeah, we're happy as Yeah, we love this, see what I mean? She, she doesn't say much, she will say shit, but she just doesn't say it loud. Right, listen, we're, we're happy where we are. And, uh, listen, you're going to expect these videos now. And we'll be like, Mr. Bowen, we don't upload. We upload once, twice, three times, maybe four times a week. So if you're in to the absolutely crazily fucking over fucking cliched bullshit that I do, yeah, then this is the channel for you. So get the like button, bend it over, kick the shit out of it, fucking rape the fucking back end out of it, then fucking treat it like a dirty fucking black prostitute in fucking Nigeria right and then fucking tell it that you are a fucking KKK leader and you don't know why you're doing that at all right then turn around slap me in the face for being a fucking overly ridiculous fucking sort of half racist prick when I'm not racist at all right so there you go fucking just don't do anything with that like button just press it if you want to press the motherfucker right thank you very much right and that is all day I've just done a 12 fucking minute video a lot of sex you're a motherfucker on it and you know what yeah this is going to be the new channel for you for who want the real natural the sadistic the sexy bye bye Mwah. say bye bye baby bye -bye. hear that bye bye from a sexy council and there you can have a picture of the big chest as well